when you know how to flow and one of the areas of flow is complete concentration, you are able to execute precisely on your tasks. You're able to precisely execute on your vision. Let's go a bit bigger. You're able to precisely execute on your purpose. And because you're able to precisely execute, it's less energy and hard work. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Flow State Business Podcast. My name is Ruby. I'm your host. I have the best job in the world. I am a flow activator for six to seven figure entrepreneurs, helping you love your business and do big things, achieve impossible successes with more effortlessness and ease than ever. So if this is for you, then you are absolutely in the right place. And we have such a great episode today. We are speaking all about the power of entering complete concentration. It's like your cone of silence and being able to fully immerse in your work. I know that it's not easy. I know a lot of you have multiple businesses, you have family commitments, you're traveling all the time. It just feels like a constant juggle and the checklist treadmill is a real thing. You've got so much on your to-do list, either mental notes that are happening everywhere or physical post-it notes everywhere. Yeah, I get it. But if you do not learn how to enter into complete concentration in your business, you're going to run into a lot of issues, a lot of mistakes, a lot of having to redo things, a lot of embarrassing moments. And more so than this, you are not entering into flow. And that's an issue. It's an issue because what this is going to lead to is you needing to work a lot harder to get to where you want. And eventually you're either going to see that now or you're going to see it later. Those that do know how to enter into flow and access complete concentration on demand are going to leapfrog over results that you've tried so hard to get. And they just seem to do it effortlessly. And you're literally sitting there going, excuse me, what the actual, am I missing something? Yes, you are. So we're going to begin the episode, but I hope all of you are doing really well. You know, I love a little life update here and there where actually today is the day before my birthday. Ah, can't believe it. Another trip around the sun, you guys. And I've been in this business now for five and a half years. My goodness. And it has truly been the best five and a half years of my life. I truly say this hand on heart, the excitement I get from the business and how many people I've been able to meet through it and what I've learned about myself. And I run the business with my husband, how close we've gotten in our marriage because of it. I know we have a unicorn relationship where we can actually work together and just being able to give so much back and put so much out there in the world. This birthday is definitely a significant reminder to me of how much I've done within the business space, but also how much I've done as a friend and a mother. And if I really reflect back on this year, that was look, 2023 hasn't been an easy one for a lot of people that I've spoken to. It hasn't been, I would say like my favorite, favorite year, (laughs) but it's weird because I have had such a good one. I can't quite put my finger on it completely, but it's like I've traveled the world for almost six months this year just crazy. I did a big USA trip to set up the business there, which is definitely still happening. I need to do a life update on that. And we did Europe and Dubai. I came back, moved into our brand new home, which we had bought before we left to go overseas. And it's been so wonderful to have our house. And then I went to London with my beautiful clients and came back, went to Bali. And here we are like the year has been pretty sweet from a travel perspective for sure. But I think I've hit a level of travel burnout and I just want to cozy up at home. Although it is so freaking hot here in Australia right now, at least where I live, I've got the air con going. I'm still hot. I've got all the lights on, which isn't helpful, but you know, cozy up in the sense of it's heading towards that time of year where we can snuggle with the family and really reflect. So it's kind of a nice place to be. And It's also been a really wonderful time to reflect on what has worked in business this year and what hasn't. And because of that, it's really called me up into this space of needing to set very, very clear goals, which we talked about in the last episode. If you haven't caught it, this 
particular conversation is a continuation of that. So I would say go and have a listen to that after this one if you need to catch up. However, the requirement for me to get clear on those goals and then now to get clear on how to execute on those goals has asked me to drop into a zone of complete concentration more than ever. And my day-to-day life, I'll say I'm very lucky to have zones of time where I can do that. Even though I have a very busy business where I'm speaking to a lot of clients and I'm coaching clients consistently in this last week, I've probably had 15 coaching calls, which I love. And the coaching calls aren't long by any means. They're like 15 to 20 minutes long. I'm starting to really love doing micro calls like that. My clients love it too, because I work with a lot of busy entrepreneurs. We don't necessarily want to sit down for an hour. The 15 to 20 minute calls are like these bursts of energy. And maybe if you're interested, can you let me know if you want to learn how to do that? Or if you're interested to hear me talk about micro coaching calls and how that works, everything from how, you know, sits with my clients and how I price it and all those things. Let me know in the comments if that's what you want or send me an Instagram DM. So far, I'm loving it. But in saying so, I'm finding nice pockets of time to enter into deep concentration. And this is, I would say, one of the biggest areas of struggle. In fact, when I tested my client group on this, and so many of you have done the flow frequency quiz, if you have also hit the like button because I think it's really awesome that you're able to see now the 12 areas of flow and where you can work on that. I'm going to be releasing a different episode every week on the different areas of flow. So this one is for you if you want to learn about how to drop into complete concentration. And if you scored lower than 70% on that in your quiz, then definitely lean in. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the quiz is in the show notes, link in bio on Instagram. You can go and access it everywhere. So this is the one that I'd say the average of the group scored 59% on being able to completely drop into concentration. And when I drilled down and I asked my clients why that is, a lot of them just said that they don't know how to do it, or it doesn't seem like a priority, or they just have fallen into a habit where they don't really make clear time for their business. And it's just one thing stacking on top of the other and not really being able to dedicate something very specific and a time period around that. So let's discuss, let's talk about why complete concentration is so important. It is such a fundamental part of achieving flow. And this is a state in which your performance is at the highest peak of where it can go. Like you are just on a roll. You are doing things and it just feels like time is expanding for you. Otherwise known as time dilation. Just like when your pupils dilate in the dark, you're able to see more and do more and it's automatic. It's effortless, right? It just happens. And there's more creativity than ever. And more so than that, there is something about the way that I phrase this, which really resonates with a lot of my clients. And I think I'm just going to start saying it more and more because this works in terms of the logic and the energetics together. The reason why learning about flow also equals effortless effort is because when you know how to flow and one of the areas of flow is complete concentration, you are able to execute precisely on your tasks. You're able to precisely execute on your vision. Let's go a bit bigger. You're able to precisely execute on your purpose. And because you're able to precisely execute, it's less energy and hard work. It's more just like, I got this. (gasps) (laughs) You know what I mean? It's just It's so easy. It's like, okay, I'm a master at this and I'm able to pinpoint it and I don't need to do all the fluffy things around it. I know what it takes and what I need to do in order to have this specific goal happen. And you're not going to get there without being able to enter into a zone of complete concentration because what's actually happening is that you're working through this never ending to-do list, whether it be mental list or post-it notes everywhere. And you're trying to do everything because you think that you're the best at doing everything and nobody can do it as well as you. Yeah, we've all been there. Complete concentration will help you see and your distractions will fade. Distractions also include things that don't actually move the needle 
When I say that, I mean the income needle, the purpose needle, the ability for you to actually drive action forward. In complete concentration, this heightened focus, which is really what it is, enables you to tap into this level of potential and you can lead You know, we're all leaders here, but you're leading yourself into creating more innovation in your business and being able to work through complexities and solve problems so much easier rather than solving it out of reactiveness or feeling frantic or feeling as though you've got nowhere to go. If you're feeling that way because you're not earning as much as you had in previous years and you don't know why clients aren't signing up as easily as they had in the past, we need some complete concentration time because in that are your soul led answers. And in that is where your energy can respond to what your brain is trying to tell you. Your brain is constantly trying to give you solutions, but you're not hearing it because you're moving from one task to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. So here are some questions. We're going to open up with this one. When in your day, do you know for sure you can enter into complete focus and concentration? Is it towards the early part of the day when nobody is awake yet and you are the first riser. You wake up at 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and you have quiet time in your home before the world wakes. Is it in the afternoon after you've gotten your admin tasks out the way and you've done the drop-offs for the kids and you've gone to the gym and you've got this window of opportunity where you just got silence in the house? Or is it later on at night? Everyone's gone to bed and it's 11 o'clock. You can put some beats on, which I'll talk about in a second, and you can just drop into this zone, burn the midnight oil in the most vibey way. So I want you to write that down. I am most able to drop into complete concentration during the hours of mm and mm. What do those hours look like? Now, I want to ask you, what are you currently doing within those hours? If you have issues dropping into deep flow and concentration, I'm willing to guess that you're not in deep concentration during those hours when you know you best respond to a level of focus. So we're going to rearrange some things. I want you to have a look at your calendar and just notice what you're overlaying and what you're placing on top of these really precious hours where your brain is actually really wanting to kick up a lot of those focus chemicals to help you really zone in, literally drop in the zone. And nothing during that time is going to be filled with crap that doesn't actually need complete concentration. (laughs) You are not answering emails at this time. You are not organizing your Google folders at this time. You are not swiping through, kidding yourself on social media that you're doing research on what trending sounds to use on reels during this time. You can do that when you're creating a circuit breaker for your brain and watching reality TV and scrolling. You can do that then. But what I'm talking about here is getting very, very clear with your boundaries around keeping the distractions at bay. When we are able to minimize distractions and all the external stimuli, we actually create such an environment for our brain to drop into such conducive, deep work. And the conductivity of this means that we're able to dedicate such undivided attention to tasks that may seem really difficult, but needs complete concentration. Next week, we're going to release an episode on how to work with complexities in your business, but we can't talk about that until we get clear on what hours of the day you are most able to enter into deep concentration, because this is how we work through it with ease and precise execution. Does it all make sense? (laughs) It all circles back around and how you can foster more creativity and innovation, which are the happy things that help you bring more playfulness, more ease and effortlessness into your business. So two questions, go back if you have missed it and answer them because they're going to show you a lot of things about your habits. It's going to show you a lot of things about how you may need to re-scope and work around, rearrange your current daily rituals and routines so that you are really protecting that. 
Hi guys, I just want to quickly pop in and I'm hoping you are loving this episode so far. If you have heard me talk about flow and you are wanting and interested and intrigued to learn more about your own flow frequency and the health of your flow state, then you might be very interested in taking the flow frequency quiz. I'm going to leave that in the show notes if you're interested to do that. It's absolutely free. It takes about seven minutes or less to complete and it's going to give you so much insight into potentially where you can work on so that you can activate more flow in your life and business. Okay, let's head back to the episode. Now, a couple of hot tips. When you are entering deep concentration, there is an on-ramp. Now the on-ramp means that you need to get rid of what in flow science we call attention residue. Attention residue is when you have just completed a task or multiple tasks and a part of that is still shadowing into your complete concentration time. When you kind of just still feeling the energy of that, maybe the rush of it, and you're just double checking, triple checking things in your head without you even realizing, that's attention residue. Now, in order to completely rid of any attention residue that's hanging about, we need to slow down our prefrontal cortex to get into the focus zone. One of the best ways you can do that is to do something called the circuit break. There is an incredible researcher, her name is Sophie Leroy, and she lectures in the business school for the University of Washington. She also wrote this really important paper, which has really spanned across things like flow science and attention science, has fed towards a lot of research towards ADD and ADHD. The paper is called, Why Is It So Hard To Do My Work? The Challenge of Attention Residue When Switching Between Work Tasks. This was published in 2009. You can go reference that. I'll leave the link below if you want to go read that paper. But this is super interesting because what Sophie talks about is why it's so important to minimize that attention residue and how you can do this the best is through a circuit breaker activity. Now, circuit breaker activities, there's so many. I've literally just gone through this inside of my flow state business course, which is going so well. Like I cannot believe we're already four to five calls in. Unbelievable. Everybody on the inside is taking so much accountability for their flow. It's unbelievable. If you have the opportunity to join the next round, I would definitely mark that in your calendar for the new year. You want to dive deeper into this because I'm already seeing how many on the inside are making such fundamental changes to their work habits. And they're already reporting back saying things are getting easier and things are getting more flowy. So, ah, love that feedback so much. But in saying so, Circuit Breaker, I'll give you a couple of examples, but there's so many. One of my favorite Circuit Breakers is in between tasks, I just might want to shake off the actual energy that's sitting somatically in my body. So I'll do what is called an exercise snack. This term was coined by an Australian entrepreneur and fitness guru, Kayla Itzinus and I watched her do a talk at I think a business chicks event or something and she had mentioned this term exercise snack which basically is do 10 sit-ups 10 push-ups 10 star jumps super quick it just gets your heart rate going and you can refocus that's a really fun one for me another one you can do is just make a really healthy snack and It's short, it's sweet, it's something different. It just helps you reset and you're back into it. And a third one is going to be one that is only really possible for those of you that can be more disciplined around it. And this is maybe having a reality TV snack, (laughs) taking some time in the middle of the day, but not getting too sucked into the vortex where you're not doing anything else for the rest of the day. Reward yourself accordingly. And I have very specific rules around circuit breakers. I won't go into that today, but you will know your limits. Once you're through the circuit break, which by the way, can be as short as five to seven minutes, you can enter into complete concentration and you're going to set yourself a timer. So research tells us that the most optimal state of flow is 90 minutes. I really don't recommend going longer than that without having a short intermittent break. Your brain just needs a reset. And if you're going and going and going and going and going and going, it's likely just going to lead you to flatlining the next day (laughs) and just spinning out. Please just be aware of your energy. Even if you're feeling really good, just take the time. It's going to pay off in a long way, right? Like every car who's racing in the F1 still needs a pit stop. Okay. Don't run your tires bare. 
When you're in the 90 minutes, you also want to potentially create the vibe. And that might be lighting a candle, signaling to your brain, I'm ready to enter into flow state. For me, how I like to do it is to actually put on some lo-fi beats and have some subliminals going, something like that, where I know I am filling up my subconscious mind with such good, juicy stuff. A lot of my clients have actually asked if they can get my flow track because it's nice to be able to sit alongside and almost feel like we're co-working together. I'll leave the link in the show notes and also in my bio. It's a 90 minute productivity flow track. You'll love it. And it is so juicy. Halfway through, I stop in, I check in with you. We do a little circuit breaker and then we go straight back in. So many of my clients who have used this and purchased it have said that it has become their by far favorite deep concentration buddy, and it's really helping them focus so much more on the task at hand. One other thing I'll say about music is do not play music with lyrics when you are entering deep concentration. You might not feel like it's going to affect you too much, but subconsciously we're just wanting to keep the processor lean and clean. So if you've got lyrics going on, your brain's going to be like, oh, I know this song. I know this lyric. And then you're going in and you're singing all the lyrics, whether out loud or it's running through your head. That just means that there's more information processing and you're not able to completely drop into concentration. I have been a serial lyric listener during flow state time and then it drops me out of it so much. So I'll listen to the lyrics and then I'll think about who wrote the song and how much pain they were in and who it was about and when they wrote it and who they co-wrote it with and blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, I've opened up six tabs trying to like work out who wrote the lyrics of this song and the background behind it. <laughs> Anyone else can relate to that? Oh my gosh. Anyhow, I hope this episode has really helped you see complete concentration in a new way, but also in a way as though you're holding up the mirror. Why are you not focusing on things? It's probably because you're not using that really precious amount of time when you know you're best able to flow and you're using that time for something else, which isn't conducive for your optimal state. And also some hot tips there around circuit breaker, 90 minute flow track, connecting into music that doesn't have too many lyrics so that you can be less distracted. And overall, linking back to last week's episode, when you have a clear goal, and you're able to be on the on-ramp of complete concentration, you're already doing a lot of the initial pre-work that's required to drop into full optimal flow. All right. Let me know, please. If you love this episode, if you have any questions off the back of it, I'm so excited to bring you more of these next week. We're going to talk about dropping into all complexities and dealing with hard and difficult tasks and how flow plays a role in that until then go and check out all the links in the show notes and I'll catch you in the next episode. Mwah. Have the best flowy day ever. Bye guys. <laughs>